All right, uh, welcome again to Real Crusades History. Occasionally, anti-Western propagandists will charge the warriors of the First Crusade with cannibalism. Uh, they usually mention the matter of cannibalism rather vaguely, attempting to pass the Crusaders off as insane barbarians. Uh, of course, this is absurd. Here's what actually happened. During the First Crusade, after the conquest of Antioch, one small army of crusaders struck out on its own to take the city Marat al Numan. During the siege, the crusaders were struck by a severe famine. After a long time of starving, some of them broke down and roasted the flesh of Muslims who had already been killed during the fighting. In other words, this was a crisis situation. Just as the victims of modern day plane crashes in remote areas, have sometimes been forced to eat human flesh to survive. So are these individuals faced with a similar disaster. The attitude of medieval crusaders toward cannibalism was exactly the same as our attitude about it today. It was considered to be horrific and was only possible in a madness-inducing crisis. Okay? All right, so let's turn to the chronicler Fulcair of Chartres. Uh, 1059 to 1127. He was a French priest who participated in and documented the First Crusade. Then they, a small group of crusaders, hastened to the other city, Marat on Numan, and besieged it for 20 days. Here our men suffered from excessive hunger. I shudder to say that many of our men, terribly tormented by the madness of starvation, cut pieces of flesh from the buttocks of Saracens lying there dead. These pieces they cooked and ate, savagely devouring the flesh while it was insufficiently roasted. In this way, the besiegers were harmed more than the besieged. So what is Fulcher telling us here? Well, he's describing a horrible disaster, for one thing. He himself comments on what a terrible situation this was and how it, it, disgusting it was that these men were reduced to eating human flesh in order to survive. Fulcair's attitude is the attitude of Western Christians of the time. There's no doubt about that. Uh, no historian would dispute that. So this same story is recounted in a letter by Godfrey Bouillon, that great hero of the First Crusade, and also Raymond of St. Gilles, another uh, strong personality from the First Crusade. This was a letter to the Pope. After we had triumphed over the enemy, as our army was wasting away at Antioch from sickness and weariness and was especially hindered by the dissensions among the leaders, we proceeded into Syria, stormed Bara and Mara, cities of the Saracens, and captured the fortresses in that country. And while we were delaying there, there was so great a famine in the army that the Christian people now ate the putrid bodies of the Saracens. Okay, so Godfrey and Raymond are describing these events with the same tone of disaster that Fulcair used. And again, here's another example of this story being discussed, this time by the chronicler Robert the Monk. They were so desperate with hunger that they ended up, a horrible thing to have to describe, cutting up the bodies of the Turks, cooking them and eating them. The Count of St. Gilles was distraught with such difficulties. Okay, it is clear that Fulcair of Chartres, Godfrey of Bouillon, Raymond of St. Gilles and Robert the Monk all shared our modern-day disgust with cannibalism. Uh, they, they each relate the story of the Crusaders' sufferings at Marat on Numan with shock and horror. We find Islamic chroniclers describing stories of Muslims engaging in cannibalism during the Crusades era as well. Let's take an example from the memoirs of the Syrian Arab warrior Usama ibn Munkid, a, a fascinating writer, a great uh, source from this period, um, and, and a really admired man among his contemporaries. Interestingly, these Muslims were not eating human flesh in a crisis of survival, but ritualistically. A young man of the bodyguard saw Ridwan standing by the door of the mosque and said to him, O oh my lord, dost thou not want to ride my horse? Surely, replied Ridwan. So the young man came at a gallop towards him with his sword in his hand. He then moved his arm as though he were bending to dismount, and struck him with his sword. 
Ridwan fell to the ground. The Sudanese rushed and put him to death. The people of Egypt parceled out his flesh among them and ate it in order to acquire bravery. This is a rather stunning passage from Usama's writings. Usama, who spent much of his career in Egypt, is describing here some fighting among Muslims in which an Islamic warrior named Ridwan is killed and then eaten by Egyptians. Unlike the Christian writers we just read, Usama doesn't express disgust at this event. Not saying that he didn't feel it, I, I don't know, but he simply reports it unemotionally. I mean, again, it is very interesting to note that the story of cannibalism at Mara involved a disaster in which men were starving and forced to eat human flesh. On the other hand, Ridwan was eaten by Egyptian Muslims as a matter of ritual. I mean, <laughs> so which of these two events is ultimately more disgusting to a modern-day reader? Anyway, all that aside, the fact is cannibalism is a topic very rarely mentioned in the chronicles of medieval Christians and Muslims. Um, obviously, it was not something that was sanctioned by either religion. But it is occasionally brought up by those with an anti-Crusader bias in an attempt to falsely portray the Crusaders as barbaric. However, the next time someone misinterprets the disaster at Marat on Numan, you should remind them of Usama ibn Munkid's account of Muslim cannibalism. So I'll end this video about cannibalism on, if it's possible, a, a lighter note. Um, during the Siege of Antioch, uh, between 1097 and 1098, Bohemond, who uh, was one of the leaders of the Crusaders besieging that Muslim-held city, um, was having problems with Muslims slipping into his camp and uh, acting as spies for um, the Muslim leadership within Antioch. Uh, to solve this problem, Bohemond actually staged some phony cannibalism in which he basically had some huge pots uh, and he, which were boiling with water in them and he spread rumors that he had put Muslim spies in those pots and he was going to feed them to his soldiers. Um, you know, uh, the Muslims who heard this rumor in Antioch were obviously terrified because this was an unknown enemy and people tended to um, make their enemies into these exaggerated monstrous uh, caricatures and so they were really afraid hearing this rumor, and so after that, Bohemond never had any more problems with spying. So that isn't an example of anything other than really good military thinking on Bohemond's part. I mean, you know, Bohemond obviously was a very clever individual. He understood how to use psychological warfare on his enemies, and of course, he also had kind of a weird sense of humor. I mean, he, he probably thought this was very funny, you know. Well, we'll make them think we're, we're so frightening that we're cannibals. I mean, obviously it was absurd. You know, nobody in his army was going to eat any Turkish spies. And, you know, he wasn't boiling the bodies of dead Turks to, to feed anybody. I mean, but it was a brilliant, um, a brilliant act of early psychological warfare.